Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones from Massimo Consumer, and I am here with Ricard from Durac. You could have the best speakers, the best AVR, but the one thing you have to also factor in is the room and how your sound system interacts with the room. So if you're trying to make sure that your room, that you maximize the performance, you have to do some sort of room correction. And when it comes to room correction, one of the leaders in room correction is Durac. So we want to come here and with Ricard and talk a little bit about Durac and why you would want to actually utilize this to maximize the performance of your home theater. So Ricard, can you talk a little bit about the company and, um, and how you got started and everything else? Sure, Phil. Thank you for having me. So Dirac was founded back in 2001, mm -hmm. and originally that was a spin-off from the University of Uppsala, which is just north of Stockholm in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And so these guys who formed the company realized that algorithms can be applied to audio to, to enhance and reduce effects that are caused by the room, really deteriorating the experience of, of an audio system. Mm -hmm. And originally, uh, we, uh, as a company, uh, got traction into the automotive in, uh, business and started off from there and then kind of grew over into the home segment as well. And that's sort of how the company evolved over time and then added new algorithms on top of the original one with new technologies coming on board. But it's always been that kind of a landscape where automotive was and still is a big portion of what we do, and now home is starting to pick up, uh, being a large and large share of what we do. Mm -hmm. And then also, like impulse correction, is that what it's? You it, got impulse. That's kind of main thing that you guys do that really separates you from, from anybody else. Can you talk about what that is, just real quickly? That's right, so impulse correction, meaning uh, you have an impulse that's a spike in time that's mm -hmm. then received in the other hand when you measure how that looks like. Mm -hmm. In ideal scenarios, it would look the same way mm -hmm. when it comes out the other end after you know being processed by, by the audio system and uh, coming through the, the acoustics of the room. By measuring how it actually looks, you can compensate for the imperfections caused by the room mm -hmm. and the system if you have a poor one and then apply those in reverse, in, in mm -hmm. inverted uh, form before mm -hmm. it's being played. And in that way, you can correct the impulse response uh, uh, that, that it becomes a corrected signal once receiving, received by, by, uh, by the ears of the listener. So you can think of it in a way that instead of the, all the speakers playing sound at the same time, mm -hmm. they play sound at different times, so mm -hmm. it arrives at the listener's ears so if at it goes, the same time. Yeah, so a lot of times, so if there's a click, you want the click to hit your ears at the exact same time. But instead, it's kind of like click, 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 click. That's exactly and, right. And, and, you, and, you, and it ends up smearing the sound. And what you're not hearing is what the creator wanted you to hear. So the goal of this is just to remove your environment from the sound so you get to hear the sound the way the creator wanted to hear it. So there's a whole lot of technology, but the nice thing about these guys is they figured that out for you. You just have to follow the process and the software will work through and ensure that you, regardless of your room, you get the best performance possible. That's right. Okay. So we actually introduced um, Durac to our um, Dinan and Marantz AVRs about two years ago. Right about, yes. Yeah. And, and we promised back in that, at that time that, that there's lots of different levels or tiers of Durac and we were going to work our way up the tiers. So first we start off with... Um, Dirac Limited di and then Dirac Full, of room, which correction, yes. room correction. Mm -hmm. But last year or this year, we've actually added bass control. So can you talk about what the difference is between you know maybe Dirac Full versus Dirac Bass Control? Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, if we start there with the difference between the limited version and the full version of, mm -hmm. of room correction, it's basically down to a limited version being capped at 500 hertz. Mm -hmm. So same algorithm, just operating below that, that, that frequency in, in the limited version. In the full one, you have the full range up to 20,000 mm -hmm. hertz. And then that's room correction, and that's the mandatory algorithm mm -hmm. you need in order mm -hmm. to run direct live. That's, that's the mm -hmm. basis of it all. And if the device supports bass control, mm -hmm. uh, you're able to then buy an upgrade mm -hmm. and, and get going with that algorithm as well, uh, as well on top of it. Mm -hmm. and Base control is really designed to be applied on subwoofers, making mm -hmm. the subwoofers in interact not only with each other, but also with full range speakers. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole um, meaning of base control is to create a homogenous experience mm -hmm. of how bass is perceived in the room. Mm -hmm. It's most often uh, uh, compared to 
when you have subwoofers that you would um, have operating in the room, mm -hmm. you can experience peaks and at dips mm -hmm. at, at different points, not only different geographical or, or locations in room, but also mm -hmm. on different frequencies that, mm -hmm. that will vary. With bass control, that all evens out, so you get mm -hmm. a smooth experience regardless of where you are in the room. Mm -hmm. And this is a question I, I get from time to time. Does that mean that room correction is not playing on the subwoofers? Mm -hmm. No, it does not. So room correction, the original basis license, mm -hmm. base license is, is playing on all speakers, including mm -hmm. subwoofers. Mm -hmm. But the layer on top of that is that you get that even experience mm -hmm. of, of subwoofers. Mm -hmm. And one of the main benefits with, with bass control is that you, you can place subwoofers uh, I mean, there are ideal positions where you should I, most mm -hmm. ideally put them, mm -hmm. but, but most often you are not able to. So regardless of where you put them, the algorithms of base control would create this uh, even experience regardless of, of, of the location and still apply that algorithm to, to even out the experience of, of uh, the base in the room. Yeah, because that's one of the most the, the major complaints we have or we hear from, from people, from listeners or people enthusiasts, is the base in the room. And that's the reason why Dirac has this limited, because a lot of times people just say, just fix my base. Everything else is okay, just fix my base. Right. And then, but those who want to go to the next step could do, could do full range. Mm -hmm. so, so base control just gives you more control over your, over your subwoofers. And I love the point that you mentioned that sometimes you have no control over the room and you have no control over where you're going to place your subs. So we're actually at a trade show right now. And where we place the subs is where they're going to fit. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And we would love to put them in the optimum position, but we can only do so much in this particular sure. space. So, so we reached out to, to Dirac, and they came in, and they just actually calibrated this room. This is a 700 series Bowers theater that has six DB4 Bowers subwoofers and um, for the bass, along with seven um, full range um, uh, uh, 700 series speakers. So we, we have the capability. It was just the room that was holding us back. And when we A-B before and after with bass control, the difference is, is, is dramatic. So love it. But there's something you did to now to actually make it even more enticing for users to actually go to, to direct uh, over what you had before. So that was an adjustment to the pricing for bass control. So can you talk about that? Yes, so we recently applied a, a change to the previous setup of, of how base control was uh, brought to the market. So we used to offer that as a single subwoofer license and a multi-subwoofer license. And in order to make that more accessible and a simplified onboarding journey for the user, but also to revisit the, 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 the pricing point, mm -hmm. we now combine those licenses into a new type of base control license that's for unlimited subwoofers, mm -hmm. uh, that makes the onboarding uh, easier. The, the user no longer has to choose between uh, a single and a, and a multi version. If you mm -hmm. get another subwoofer, you don't have to buy the upgrade between the, the two of them. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, uh, multi subwoofer license for base control used to cost four hundred ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. Now we we offer the combined license at two hundred ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So so the four hundred forty percent you would take mm -hmm. a, a discount on the previous prices. Is, is a way to make that more accessible uh, and, and available to, uh, to use this so that more people can enjoy mm -hmm. that great, great even mm -hmm. uh, base experience that base control can give. Yeah, because we tell people all the time, if you have the opportunity to put subs in a room, multiple subs are better than a single. It's better to have four small ones in a room than one big one because you get a more even base response. But mm -hmm. you're still at the mercy of your placement, phasing, all these other things. Mm -hmm. So being able to spend a little bit more for base control, since you've already made that investment to optimize the base in your room is a, is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other things you've done too. Originally when, we, when you went out and you bought a, a direct license and you had your, your limited and your, and your full base management, you would have to go in originally and make your um, adjustments, determine what the crossover points are for your speakers. Now, you may go out and buy a speaker that's large, but guess what? In this, in this room, that speaker may not perform as large. So you're taking a, basically a guess. So now, mm -hmm. um, because uh, bass control is, is, is an option on a DIN and Emirates receiver, even if you do limited and full, you also get access to bass management, correct? That's right, thanks for bringing that up. That's, that's a feature we don't promote much, but mm -hmm. it's actually in there on, on each device that actually can support bass control, regardless of you having the license or not, mm -hmm. bass management, as we call it, mm -hmm. is then offered on that device, as long as you have 
direct light to begin with, with room correction. Mm -hmm. So what that does is basically it gives you the, the uh, possibility to, to control the crossover point. Mm -hmm. That comes included in the software. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a feature that's included kind of as a teaser of mm -hmm. you know, what, what base control can do. It's a mm -hmm. totally different thing from the algorithm of base control, mm -hmm. but it's, an, it's, an, it's a, uh, a way to offer something more to those who are, might be interested in exploring the, the uh, upgrade to base control. Okay, so let's talk about upgrades real quick. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple ways you can start. Say I just went out and bought a brand new AVR. Look behind us, you'll see that there's kind of a, a QR code. It explains what base control is. It explains what, what, what Durac is. It explains all that stuff to you. But say I already have that. And you know I already had maybe full or I had limited. Mm -hmm. And now I decide I want base control. How right. do I upgrade? How simple is it to upgrade? Right, so, so it's pretty straightforward. It's, uh, we, we offer the licenses for the upgrade to any, any license that's available with a device on mm -hmm. Dirac.com. Mm -hmm. So you would go to Dirac.com and you would find the device that you're looking for to upgrade mm -hmm. and then pick the, the base control upgrade mm -hmm. uh, on top of the existing license. Then you receive a license key and mm -hmm. then you validate that license key to your Dirac account. Mm -hmm. And then you're set when you log into the device again, you, you can create that filter. Mm -hmm. You can still use the same product as mm -hmm. used before. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to remeasure in the okay, room. Okay, so it already, it already knows the measurements. It's just now you can do more with the measurements exactly, that exactly, you already had. Exactly. Okay. And so the nice thing is you made it even easier. So instead of, and not, not only do you have to just go to, you don't go to direct.com, if you go to direct.com backslash Marantz, you go to the Marantz products. There you go. And yeah. if you go to direct.com backslash um, Denon. Denon, you get the Denon one. So hey, mm -hmm. you win. All right, mm -hmm. so so I believe it's a it's a really really great um, addition to our to our systems. And anybody who's looking to optimize the performance of their system, you can only do so much with the speakers you buy, the amplifiers you buy, even the room treatments you buy. You still need to get if you want to optimize your investment, um, some sort of really good digital room correction is always mm -hmm. um, a big thing. On so, top of it all, it would be humanly impossible to replicate the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, corrections that the algorithm supply. So it's, it's a way to reach some a, a way of experience audio that otherwise is not attainable. Okay, so let me ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. we, we've talked about all this stuff, but we haven't got a chance to really get into the technical details. Where would I find that information if I want to learn more about the software and how does it work? And do you guys have resources for that? So we do have a, a help desk function where we gather a lot of the, these FAQs that pop up from mm -hmm. now and then from people who are curious and find out more or troubleshooting or running into, you know, it might be that they're, they're having, uh, you know, wanting to upgrade to a certain uh, level of license or, or different kinds like that. So mm -hmm. they would go to helpdesk.direct.com. Mm -hmm and uh, they will be able to navigate our FAQs and, and mm -hmm. see what's there. And if they wouldn't find it, they would be able to place a question to our, our, our support. Mm -hmm. uh, we would reach back to them with, with uh, most of the time answers to, to the questions. Yeah, and also you could check out our um, Massimo Consumer Learning YouTube channel where we actually will walk you, through, we're gonna do some more videos to walk you through the steps and show you the upgrade path. We already did one for Durac Full, right. Um, so we're going to actually do one about upgrading to base control and what the differences are. So if you want to learn more about how to go through it and, and what's the steps to upgrade, um, check out our YouTube channel. So to find out more, go to direct.com direct and also check out our, our YouTube channel on Massimo Consumer on YouTube.